Um, welcome everyone, and it's lovely to have you all here. Um, I'm Linda Waldman. I'm the Director of Teaching at, and Learning at IDS. And with me is Ayushi Mishra, who's one of our student reps. So she's doing MA Development Studies this year, and she's the student rep for MA Development Studies. And Ayushi, I'm really pleased that you're here to do this with me today. So welcome and thank you. Um, I'd like to ask all of you to do me a favor before you start. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful day here. And when I look out my window, I see green fields and blue skies and the sun shining, which makes me very happy. But I've no idea where you are or what time of day it is. So can I ask you all to look out the window and have a look and see what you see. And then in the chat, tell us where you are and what you can see when you look out the window, just to introduce yourselves to all of us. And we're going to give you a minute to do that or two minutes to do that. Brighton and the sun is shining. Southwest London and it's grey. I'm sorry, maybe the sunshine will creep up to you. Birmingham, everyone in the UK, anyone not in the UK joining us? It's very grey and miserable in Birmingham. I'm glad I'm in the southeast at the moment. Brazil, lovely sunny. Oh, I wish I was there. So nice and warm. Pool and Dorset, blue skies and Brighton. It's miserable. Oh, Emma, I'm so sorry. Carlisle is miserable. And Norwich is grey. This is not good advertising. Istanbul sounds better and cloudy. Oh, lost Indonesia, Toronto and darkness, South London, Brazil, Japan. Mexico City, everyone's sleeping. Yes, what time is it now in Mexico City? Berlin. Gosh, that's amazing. 4.30 a.m. Uruguay, wow. Colombia, but in York, which is a bit gray. Yeah, it must be quite hard coming from Colombia to York. Okay. That's absolutely fantastic. Kelly in London, Eastbourne. So some of you are really close by and some of you are very far away. So welcome to all of you. It's fantastic to see where you're all from and it's lovely. Um, thank you very much. And if new people join, perhaps we can just all help to encourage them to introduce themselves in the chat. So hello to everyone. Um, what I'd like to do and what Ayushi and I would like to do is I'm going to do a short presentation on IDS, hopefully not for too long, and then we'll answer questions and you can ask questions. I'd like to keep it if we keep all of our conversation either in the chat or if you would like you can talk and ask to talk. So. I'm going to go start the presentation now. As I've said, for those of you who've joined a little bit later, my name is Linda Waldman. I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning at IDS. I've been at IDS for about 20 years now, and I come from South Africa. That's where I was born and grew up and was educated, and I love being at IDS. And working with me today is Ayushi Mishra, who is from India. Am I correct, Ayushi? That's correct, yes. And who's our MA Dev student rep. And she's been fantastic interacting with her during this year. And I'm really pleased she's here and with us today. So I'm going to share my slide, share my screen now and start this presentation. There we go. So Welcome, welcome to IDS. Welcome to this talk, which will tell you a little bit more about IDS. So IDS, I'm hoping to persuade you, is about transforming how you look and think about your world. And as you can see, we're ranked first in the world for development studies. Um, actually, only two days ago, yesterday, we were ranked first again for the fifth year in a row. So that's really brilliant for us. Um, and it's not just an award we hold, we share it with the University of Sussex. Um, so my slide, my slideshow is slightly out of date because it was prepared before yesterday. And so it, it's one year behind, but we, we can live with that. So IDS is all about delivering world-class research, learning, and teaching. And we don't think of IDS as a place where um, lecturers teach students. We try to think of IDS as an institution that is constantly about learning and teaching and that we can all learn and we all grow and that our students can teach us as much as we can teach them. So we're about trying to transform knowledge and action in order to create the leadership that we need to make this world a much better place. We want a world where we can all have equitable and sustainable development and where we can all work together to promote this goal. 
As I've said, IDS is currently number one in development studies in 2021, and it's also the 2020 Global Go-To Think Tank um, Award, also number one, which is brilliant. And we're really pleased with these accolades. Um, it really helps us to acknowledge the work that we do, but it's not the only thing. Um, and I'm going to hopefully convince you that at IDS, there's something much more important than, the, than these world rankings. So IDS is based at the University of Sussex. We work very much in partnership with the University of Sussex. And together with the University of Sussex, we like to think of ourselves as the biggest and the best in development studies. And of course, the QS World Rankings really help us to do that. And it's a ranking that we hold in combination with the University of Sussex. IDS the degrees that you get at IDS are accredited by the University of Sussex and on your degree transcript you will have both the University of Sussex and IDS. We have two joint master's programs which are shared programs with the university and IDS and I'll tell you a little bit more about that as well. And there's a little bit of space to change modules with it across the two. At the University of Sussex is the library services and we share the British Library for Development Studies, which we all contribute to and which for a very long time was based at, the at IDS and it's now in the University of Sussex Library. And we do lots of joint research and joint events throughout the academic year, which of course all students are welcome to attend. So at IDS we have a range of different kinds of degrees. Um, we have Two, all of our degrees focus on development themes, but some are very specific development themes. So we have, for example, the MA Food and Development, the MA Governance and Development, Gender and Development, Poverty and Development, Climate Change and Development, and, and Globalization and Development. And I don't need to tell you that it's very obvious what the main intellectual and academic theme is of each of those degrees. We also have two degrees that focus very much on choice and on choosing what you want to do. And that's the MA Development Studies and in a very different kind of way, the MSc in Sustainable Development, which is an online part-time degree, which is not based at the university. It's um, very much a remote study degree. And then we have a degree that's very much about practice and action research, which is about how we think about power and how we think about participatory activities. So IDS is very famous for its work on participation and participatory processes. And we have this MA entitled Power, Participation and Social Change. So we have these nine master's degrees, some very specialized like the MA food or the MA governance, and some very general and very much about choice and flexibility, such as the MA development studies. We have two PhD routes for those who really want to pursue an academic career. And the one is the conventional PhD by research. And the other one is for people who've already been working as an academic in many ways and already have some published articles and they can do a PhD by published works. So to come to IDS um, and to apply to IDS, we require three things from all of our students. The first thing we require is your university qualifications. And we look for a first or an upper second class degree. So, and it's also important that your degree has a small dissertation or it's an honors degree. In addition to that, that's not the most important thing. We don't just look at grades at IDS. And in fact, much more important to us is the development related work experience that you've had. So we ask all of our students to have between one and two years of development related work. And the reason for this is because we want you to bring that experience to the classroom. We want you to be able to say, well, it's all good and well reading this article on sustainable development. But when I worked for X and we were promoting sustainable development, it looked and felt very different. And um, we're very aware that not all of you have two years of development experience and it's a very difficult context right now to always get it. And sometimes you have two years of experience, but it's not development related. And it's up to you to show us how that experience has helped you and brought you to the point that makes you want to study at IDS. So for example, if you've got two years experience in something like banking, which might not be very development orientated, you might want to say to us, I've worked in banking for two years. And during this time, 
I saw these and these things happening. And this made me wonder how, how people who don't have access to property or how people who don't have stable jobs are able to access credit. And this led me to read this kind of work and led me to ask these kinds of questions. So you can relate your work to what you want to do at IDS. And we ask our students to do for us a detailed two-page personal statement. Ayushi, I don't know if you can remember doing yours. Um, these are really important. And these are not just, we don't first decide on the basis of your education and your qualifications, whether we're going to accept you and then just check your personal statement. Your personal statement is worth taking some time about. And in this, you're trying to explain to us why are you applying to you for this degree? Why now? Why did you choose suddenly? Or why did you choose? How has everything you've done up until now led you to want to do this degree? And what are the questions you're asking? Why is it interesting to you? Um, so this is really important. It's really important. It persuades us that this person is ready to be at IDS um, and has the right kinds of approaches, questions, desires. So it's not about knowing all the answers. It's absolutely not about knowing all the answers. It's about thinking through how you, what you've done in your life and how it's led you to the position where you are now ready to embark on a degree at IDS. Um, for PhDs, it's a very different application process. This is partic particularly for master students. So let's go on to the next slide. So at IDS, this is just a little bit about our assignments and things. At IDS, most of our work is in terms of written term papers or written essays. So these tend to be between two and 5,000 words for assignments. Um, we also often have group presentations and group projects that students have to work on. And all, and all master's degrees <clears throat> finish with a dissertation. It's usually 10,000 words, but for the power participation and social change masters, it's it's longer and has carries more weight. So we don't have any exams for students anymore. Um, so occasionally we have takeaway papers or action research assignments or practical exercises or group consultancies. So all sorts of activities which are based on working collectively. And we try to be quite diverse in our assessments, but there is quite a lot of emphasis on written work and written papers as well. So at IDS, we provide quite a lot of what we call learning support and resources. So every degree has conveners and supervisors that are allocated to the degree. So conveners work with the students all year round and tend to be the main port of call, the main place you go to if you have questions. And then for each paper and for your dissertation, you're assigned a supervisor or you can choose, sometimes you can choose your supervisor. Um, classes and, and learning tends to happen in lectures, classes, seminars, and sometimes workshops. And these are some of the examples of workshops that we do. In the, in may, for many years in the past, we've had what we call Robert Chambers workshops, which are introducing students to participatory methods and approaches. More recently, we've called them um, participatory methods workshops. We have something called Professional Skills Week, which is just an amazing moment where Everyone at IDS, students and staff, anyone who wants to can offer a session on any skill, anything they would like to do, a, run a session on. And it's open to the whole institute and everyone comes and signs up and we all, it's where IDS learns from each other. It's incredible. It happens in January. It's a real moment of celebrating learning within the institute. We have a research design module and a methods week, which are geared towards helping you write your dissertation. And it's all about thinking about how you do research and how you answer academic questions and what you want to do. And then almost every week of the year, we have these core sessions, which teach you how to do things like how to read critically, how to write, um, how to work with academic literature, things like that. And I've already mentioned that we have the British Library for Development Studies collection. And at IDS, we have, it's relatively new, I think it's two or three years old now, the most amazingly beautiful study space for students. And I'd love to put my office there, but unfortunately I can't do that. Um, so at the moment we have about 226 master students at IDS. I've got 161 of them are doing IDS specific degrees. And there are about 56 students who are doing shared IDS and the University of Sussex degrees. Those are the MA in food, 
and the MA in climate, MSc in climate change. And we have students from more than 60 nationalities present at IDS at the moment. So at the Robert Chambers workshop in September 2019, we had 67 countries represented and 40 languages spoken. And I say this because I think this is the most valuable thing about IDS. It doesn't really matter what we teach. The most valuable thing you can get from IDS is your friendships and your relationships and your networks and your partnerships and your exposures to working with people with different ideas, different perspectives, different ways of talking, different, different cultural concepts and all of that. When us alumni talk about what they learned at IDS, they very seldom say, oh, I remember Dr. Waldman telling me this, this, and this. Mostly they say, I learned how to work in diverse groups and to grapple with diverse challenges where people come with different strengths and different values and we make it work. So this is a really important point for us at IDS. So we have a new vision and a new strategy, which is all about creating a more equitable and sustainable world where people can live with their live their lives free from poverty and, and injustice. And at IDS, we work on many, many, many topics, but we have four key commitments that we want to work on, which are about upholding climate and environmental justice, about reducing extreme inequities, fostering healthy and fulfilling lives, and nurturing inclusive, democratic, and accountable societies. So these are all very important commitments for us that we're going to be working on very specifically in the next five years. So in addition to that, at IDS, as part of our commitment, we do want to work in an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary way. We want to work and collaborate across the different sciences, so social science, natural science, across the different sectors and across communities. We want to build lead a future leadership for development. We don't think the development challenges are going to go away in a hurry. And it's really important to us that we build the leadership. And this is where you come in. You are the people who are going to help us take this planet to where we need to go. So that's a really important aspect for us. We really are, it's really important to us that we use evidence. So evidence is important. We're not journalists, we're not storytellers in it by itself. So part of what you learn at IDS is how to draw on and use evidence for social and environmental justice. IDS, we don't think of ourselves at IDS as experts at IDS who work in isolation. We think very much of ourselves who work with partners. IDS is an institute that survives through its partnerships. So we work with partners all over the world. Um, most of our research is done in partnership, not as individuals. And we work to expand these international research and mutual learning networks. And we also want IDS itself to be a sustainable, resilient and equitable institution. And that's not always easy either, but that's part of what we aim to do and aspire to do. So at IDS, we have this concept called engaged excellence, which is really important to us. And engaged excellence is all about thinking about what does it mean to be excellent and why should we be excellent and for whom should we be excellent? So, um, we think that it's no good writing absolutely brilliant PhDs and articles and, and, and that they sit in libraries and never get read or never get used. So for us, engaged excellence is about being academically excellent, but also producing research that can be used to bring about change, whether that's policy change or whether it's helping communities articulate different perspectives or whether it's putting new issues on the agenda. So we're very much about thinking about engaged excellence. It's engaged in the sense that the excellent excellence isn't just our excellence, it comes from our partnerships and it's engaged in that it seeks to bring about change in the world. Um, so we do want to be academically excellent. We strive to be academically excellent, but we want that excellence to be put to good use in the future. And so we, there are lots of articles on engaged excellence. There's this very specific IDS bulletin on it, and there's much, much more. So a little bit about where our students go. Here is a list of some of the roles and employment opportunities, in the jobs that our students have done after leaving IDS. Um, things like working for the Center for Economics and Social Development, the UNDP, working for community development projects, um, working as editorial research associates or for the Ellen MacArthur Foundation or for PricewaterhouseCoopers 
or um, for the ministries and governments. Um, so this is a range of some of the roles, some of the jobs that our students have gone on to do. And this is some of the more famous IDS alumni that we have. And sometimes these alumni come back to IDS and do talks for us. And I think it was this year that Carlos, the president of Costa Rica came back and spoke to us about his work. And what was most interesting to me in that presentation was he, he gave his kind of life trajectory and he told us how when he came to IDS, he expected to do really well and he didn't do brilliantly, he did okay. And how that kind of prepared him for when it became, when the moment came when he was going to decide whether to apply to be the president or whether to put his name forward to be the president of Costa Rica. He knew he wasn't the best. He knew he wasn't necessarily the first choice. He didn't think he was going to be brilliant at it, but his time and ideas had helped him to prepare for that. It had jostled him amongst many different people and helped him to realize that you can, you can be brilliant by bringing together lots of people's perspectives instead of being brilliant by yourself. So, I mean, it's lovely that IDS has some very famous alumni. It's nice to put their names up here. Um, he has a beautiful quote, which I really like from Isatu Toure, which says, IDS creates leaders and shapes the world development agenda. And IDS has contributed to what I am today. And I'm proud to be a product of this great and reputable institution. It's lovely that we have these famous alumni. But I'm much more interested and much more impressed with our ordinary alumni, with people who day to day go on and do the work of development, often without being praised, often without being acknowledged, and just knowing that every little act that all of our alumni do every single day helps to make the world a better place. So I think that just as important as these alumni are all the other graduates who've left IDS and gone on to develop careers in, in development. So here are just some quotes. Oh, Ayushi, yes. Um, I was just, I just wanted to tell them that this year as well, we have um, Amira Sabir, who's been elected as a member of the parliament in Cairo. Yeah. And while she was at IDS, so. And last year we had someone who was participating in high level peace talks while writing their dissertation. It's, it's incredible. So um, these are just some quotes from students at IDS. Now, I've given you a long presentation about IDS and, and IDS is, I think, absolutely amazing. And I'm, I feel every day, I feel grateful that I'm lucky enough to work at IDS. But IDS is not, is not without challenges. Coming to IDS is also a challenging place. But what I think makes IDS so valuable is, is in captured in some of these quotes. And I'm not going to read all of them, but I'm just going to mention a few of them. So IDS is a place that challenged me in ways I did not expect, which I think is grateful, but is lovely. But then on the other side, the quote on the other side, I'm eternally grateful to IDS for welcoming me with open arms and nurturing me throughout the year. I think that's a really important aspect of IDS. And then the, this student goes on to say, my experience at IDS is nothing short of a roller coaster with many ups and downs, but never once has IDS failed to provide me with a space that I felt secure in. So I'll just leave that up for a minute and you can have a quick look at them and then, oh, I didn't leave it up for a minute. I'll just move on quickly then. Here, yeah, just a few more of these quotes. And again, I, it's the middle one that I want to highlight. IDS is about people. It's about learning from people. It's about helping other people. And I think if you take nothing else away, from IDS and your time about IDS. I think it's that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be challenged. It's okay not to know the answers for sure. And IDS really, really cares about people. And, and I think that's the most important and most wonderful thing about IDS. And, and that's all I have to say. I think while I've been talking, there've been some comments in the chat. So, and what I think we'll do is we'll allow you all to ask questions and Ayushi and I will take turns to answer them. But before we do that, Ayushi, do you want to add anything to what I've said? Um, I mean, being a current student, I'm, and uh, especially during these very testing times, I would like to say that I, I personally, I've always found something very exciting uh, to do in IDS, you know, and uh, I, would, I would still recommend that uh, it's the best place to study development. I came here, I, I was the banker Linda was talking about. So I was a banker for eight years before coming here. And uh, I've developed a very, 
different approach of looking of looking at things you know and this is like in the very first six months so i would strongly recommend come come to ideas to get like a holistic view there are a lot of uh, academic organizations who have some of them are leftist some of them are right wing but ideas is pure development they don't do anything except development they are not politically inclined and that is the best part here you actually develop a very neutral a very rational and pragmatic approach to look at, to look at problems so yeah that's my take so um ayushi just to say um we have students commenting in the chat and in the q and a so we're just trying to manage both um, so one, someone in the Q&A has asked, is it mandatory that applicants have a degree in social sciences? And no, it isn't. You can have a degree in medicine, in veterinary, in biology. So no, it isn't mandatory that it must be in the social sciences. Okay, maybe Ayushi, if you follow the chat and I follow the Q&A. So over to you. Yeah, so there is this question, uh, when should we start applying if we are completing undergrads this year? So you can start applying from September and uh, I think they uh, accept applications till the 1st of August. However, I would strongly recommend that you apply as early as possible because again, it's a very competitive most of the degrees. Plus you generally require offer letters to apply for scholarships. So if you apply late, you get your offer letter late and then you won't be able to apply for scholarships, which are generally available between April and March, I think most of them. So apply as soon as possible. So, well, I'll just come in with some answers here. Um, somebody has asked if the MA, what, what is the relationship between students studying at IDS and students studying other degrees such as edu international education and development or migration and global development. So there is a little bit of overlap. So for example, we might invite students from, um, from global studies, which is in the university to attend the Robert Chambers or the participatory workshops. So there's a, and you can all attend the Sussex development lectures and things like that, but there isn't a close connection between those degrees and ideas. The degrees that have the closest connection are the shared degrees, the MA food and the MSc in climate change. And those are the ones where students tend to spend a lot of time in and out of ideas and sharing. It is possible occasionally to do a, um, one module exchange, but that's not a normal system. And just on ex when you can apply and volunteering and experience, yes, volunteering can be considered part of your work experience. That's absolutely fine. Um, and, and write it up and put it together in a way that makes it all look as coherent as possible. Okay, Yushi, over to you. Oh, you're muted, I think. Sorry, there is this question. What is the difference between the, the, I, I don't think, I think she's not written the complete question. Federica, is it? Do we still offer, yeah. oh, shall I go on or do you want to, are you? Please go on, that's the, that's yeah. the only question I have in the chat. Do box. we still offer the conflict security and development masters? No, I don't think we offer that masters. I don't know if it's a University of Sussex masters. We offer modules on conflict and development, but I don't. We don't offer a master's degree on it. And is development studies in IDS focused more on practical or theoretical? That's a really interesting question. I'm not really sure how to answer it. I think there is there is quite a strong theoretical process focus. You do have to be able to write term papers or essays. There are a lot of essays. Um, the, the dissertation is an academic dissertation, but there's also, depending on the modules you take, more or less emphasis on practical elements of, of the work. So a lot of the group projects, for example, might ask you to write a policy brief, or they might ask you to develop a consultancy. So it really depends. It's a bit of both, but but ultimately we are a university degree. And so you'd have to have some theoretical academic strengths in order to pass. Okay, shall I go on or do you have another one? No, there's nothing in the chat. Okay, I've got two more that are linked, which is how essential is the two years work experience? I'm currently completing undergraduate and would like to go straight into my master's. 
And would we accept people who do not have work experience or less than one year work experience? So if you have less than one year work experience, but you have voluntary work or internships or things like that, I would encourage you to apply. And it will depend on your personal statement. Um, what you want to show is that you have experience and questions and ideas that you can bring to the classroom. For someone who's got no work experience and wants to go straight into international development, I think IDS really probably isn't the right place for you because there will be students at IDS who've got 20 years work experience working at the World Bank or the UN. And if you have no grounds to respond to and answer questions and engage in the discussion, then that's quite tricky. But your work experience doesn't have to be somewhere exotic. You don't have to have gone and worked with poor communities in Southeast Asia. You might have volunteered at a charity in London, for example, and that is part of your experience. It's about the ability to bring your life experience to your learning and to offer and to be able to have, discuss, to have a point of reference against which you are thinking about the issues that are being shared in the classroom. Um, another question on work experience. Ayushi, do you want to go? Do you have any? Uh, not in the chat, but there's this question regarding the application process. Are the application on a rolling basis and what is the admission rate from previous years? Okay, so um, the applications are on a individual basis in the sense that we, we read each application in its own merit. Um, so we don't, we don't hold all the applications and then make a decision once we've got 100 applications or 200 applications. So we, we do each application on its own merit and we accept applications virtually throughout the year. After August, it gets too late for visas. That's the biggest problem for students who apply after August to start in September is, is the visa arrangements get really difficult. Um, what was the second half of that question, Ayushi? The acceptance rate. Um, I can't remember offhand. Um, I think it's about offhand. I think it's about um, forty percent of all of our applications. Um, but we don't have a we don't have a cutoff point. We don't say, oh, once we reach forty percent, we will stop. We will, we, we will make offers to any students that we think have a contribution to make to our, to, our, um, to our studies. If a degree is really becoming oversubscribed, we might not make any further offers on that degree. Um, and that would happen, start to happen around, around July, August. Um, Another question about volunteering work. Volunteering work definitely counts. And another question about the human rights MA. It's not part of IDS, the human rights MA. You can apply, You can you apply now for a master's degree when you graduate in 2022? No, no, you have to wait because you need your grades as well. You can't apply now. And a question on ap academic references. Do we submit these alongside our applications? Yes. If you can submit them alongside the applications, please do do that. And that's what the application asks you to do. Ayushi, have you got more? All here. So should I read it out to you? Mm -hmm. uh, they are all in the Q&A. There's nothing in the Yeah, I know. Board. I can see they love it. <laughs> so uh, one is, do many IDS students live in Brighton? Is it necessary or would it be possible to be in Brighton ah, yes. for a few days a week only? Um, okay. Um, if you'd asked me that question two years ago, I would have said, yes, most of our students live in Brighton, but COVID obviously has changed things and this year has changed things and this year we have students all over. Um, is it possible to live in Brighton only a few days a week? It partially depends on your module choices. So it partly depends on what you do. We try to group activities. So if you're doing one module, we try to do all the work for that module on one day or that day and the following day. And we try to make sure that every student at IDS has at least one day where they're not expected to come into class. That's easier to do in the first term in September to December than it is to do in the second term where all the students have quite a lot of choice in their modules. 
So it, it's possible um, to come into Brighton for a few days a week, but it's probably, you'd probably be most days a week, I think. Then uh, master's last year, is there a possibility to do an internship during the master? Um, that's an interesting question. The answer is yes and no. So um, in, in a sense, there's nothing stopping you doing an internship. At IDS, we don't have internships, except for the MA in power participation and social change, which is a place-based MA. So it, it would be up to you to organize an internship and to find one and do it. But I would also caution against that because it's actually a very short master's. The time goes very, very, very quickly and you are very, very busy. So I think trying to do an internship while doing a master's, I think I'm not sure it would be very helpful to you personally. If I were to do a master's part-time, how many days a week would it be? Really interesting question. So obviously um, doing a master's part-time also has tier four tier visa considerations. Um, but the way it works usually is you would do half the modules in one year and half the modules in the other year. So probably three days a week, two and a half, three days a week is my estimate. But again, it depends on your choices and it won't be even throughout the year. Depending on your module choice, you might be doing a certain period where you're doing all your modules in one period and then another time where you've got no modules. Um, so it, it depends slightly on your choices. Do IDS students work part-time? Yes, I think almost all students nowadays work part-time. Unfortunately, I think it's a feature of the global economy. Um, I think students are very, very lucky if they don't have to work part-time. Ayushi, do you want to answer some or is there anything? Yeah, I think the next one, after receiving an offer letter, is it fine if we pay tuition fee till June because that is when many scholarship results come out? here in India, also do we get accommodation at that time? Okay, so the first part of the question, I think the first installment you have to pay for your tuition fee is due in October. So which is in the September, the course starts and uh, October, you can obviously pay in full and otherwise you can have like an installment system. So it's uh, October, then January, then April. That's how the installments go. Uh, the second is also, do we get accommodation at that time? Well, as a master's student, if you apply well within time, then uh, they guarantee uh, the university guarantees your accommodation. So they, the housing services would send you an email and you just have to list out your preferences. But then you have to ensure that you apply timely for that. I think they have like a deadline or something, right? which is somewhere in June and July. So then. Okay, so um, a few more. Are EU students currently on an undergraduate degree in the UK considered as home students for fee purposes? I think so, but I'm not 100% sure. So you would have to check that with the university. I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Can you apply based on predicted grades? I think so. Um, I think so, although we may, we may, you may end up getting a conditional offer. And then Ayushi, the next one's for you. Talk a bit about how you personalize your degree. That's a great question. Okay, so I'll, I'll like take two minutes to explain this. Um, my background has been in financial inclusion and microfinance. And uh, I could have gone, so I was a little dicey between choosing globalization, business and development and development studies. I chose development studies because I wanted to get an understanding of all the issues, you know, how finance can be used for climate change or uh, poverty or uh, dealing with inequality. So in development, everything is correlated. Whatever you do, I, I personally feel that everything is interrelated. So what I did, so what I, in my personal experience, when I was doing development studies, in the first semester, I was understanding the different issues of international development. And I went for a more specialization thing during my second semester. So now I took business as a development actor, which includes microfinance, inclusive uh, business models, and uh, financial inclusion. And along with that, I took uh, public financial management, which helps me in understanding the tax theories, the budgeting aspect. And then I took impact evaluation, how to assess the impact of the work you are doing. So there are a lot of modules you know, that you can take. I, I missed out on certain really interesting ones like competing in the green economy. It's, it's a very difficult choice. So that I, I wanted to do uh, unruly politics, I couldn't. But then you have to pick and choose. Sometimes if like I have to say this, that our cohort 
we are a, it's a smaller cohort probably because of covid so we did ask james to give us access to a few modules just so that we could read and understand so if it's not a very uh, if we, if it's not an overburdened module then he can obviously give you access sometimes but then it's it depends on your luck so you're always losing something because there's so much constantly to learn at ideas that it's very difficult but you you can also find you know different uh, models of doing what you want to do so you can take unruly politics along with city development so it's very interesting she has another question for you sorry yeah um along with current current covid restrictions is it possible to gain a multicultural experience given that everything is online that's a, such a good question yeah uh it also depends on you like i i was telling linda yesterday that i have always found a lot of people at ids with the masks and everything we always find we we've, we've had karaoke parties in zoom you know so if you're really if you want to engage yourself you can engage yourself we are a, a relatively smaller cohort so i feel we are more connected with each other and we like to work for each other uh, we meet in small groups we we keep we stay to with our bubbles but multicultural uh, experiences are always there it also depends on you personally how you want to do it i don't think personally it's going to be as bad for the next cohort because we have the vaccine and all but if we could do it i'm sure it will be better for you so i don't think that should be a problem yeah and i think it, you pick it up in seminars and in in your yeah. interactions as well um so now there are a whole series of questions about how many hours will i be able to work per week so that it doesn't affect my studies and i'm afraid that also i can't answer that that depends on on you some students are able to juggle more than others it partly depends on the nature of your work it depends what you're doing um Ayushi, do you have an answer for that? I don't feel yeah, I, able I, to answer that. I think uh, if you're on an uh, in international visa, then you can work for like twenty hours. Oh, that's week. true. Yes, that's yes. the maximum uh, you can work. You're not supposed to. You should not. And plus, you will not have time for more than that. Yeah. I I'm telling you by personal experience. <laughs> yeah, twenty hours a week is quite a lot, actually. It's a lot of, yeah, it's it's a lot yeah. because there's a lot of reading that you want to do, and it really takes us time on that. How long does it take to receive admissions results? Oh, I would love to tell you it's really, really quick, but it isn't always. And that's because we read every single application and we consider every single application. And I mean, a long time ago, there was we, we were considering whether we go to automatic admission, like if you've got the grades, we accept students and we've decided not to do that. So I can't tell you offhand how long. Again, it partly depends which degree you apply for. Um, and if you if you genuinely don't um, don't get a response, you should reach out to someone at IDS and ask. And sometimes it takes longer than others. I would also say that just if it's possible and if it's not a burning matter, and I know you're all dying to know, but try and be patient. Um, COVID has amazingly made everybody's lives seem much busier and much harder. So if you can be patient, try and be patient. Um, but if you need to know, then write to us and ask. At what point does IDS decide which modules will be running the following year? So here's the secret of IDS. We offer the modules and we, I think we very seldom canceled any modules. If I think we have some, some statement on our website that says if insufficient students take a module, we might cancel it, but we don't, we don't only run some each year. Um, we work incredibly hard, actually, I think to the point of some frustration to make sure that every we do as much as we can to make sure that every student gets their choices. So um, we don't we don't have any plans to cancel any at this point, and we will only cancel a module if, say, only three students take it or under 10 students take a module. So the decision to cancel depends primarily on student choice. Um, are there any examples you could give of the kinds of dissertations students have completed? Um, oh, wow. Students have written on all sorts of things and all sorts of times. Um, so I, one student at the time of the Zika outbreak, one student wrote on the Zika virus and how the advertising and campaigning and safety was privileging certain people and disadvantaging certain people. This year, one student wrote about, um, these are students I supervise, so I know them. One student wrote about the 
how COVID-19 was make was kind of reclaiming gender space and, and, and allowing, how do I put it, allowing um, um, the gains that gender and women have made in the public space and in the home kind of undermining them or reclaiming them. And the fact that the collapse of the home works, the, the home into a workspace and a home made it harder for many women. Um, one student wrote on the effects of wind farms in Kenya and how community relationships with wind farms worked. Um, gosh, one student did work on um, um, progressive sex education in schools in the UK and the backlash to that. Um, there's a huge range of topics and it, we very much encourage students to choose dissertations in their interests. I can't tell you where you can find topics on dissertation topics. We share some with students, actually maybe in a little while I'll pick up some more. We share some with students when they're at IDS. But what we do have, and I'll put this in the chat, is we publish some of our students' work in terms of um, term papers and essays. So I'll put that in the chat and you can look at examples of that. And maybe if Ayusha, Ayushi tries the next few questions while I look for that. Yeah, um, so there's one question in the chat, which is, will it be wise for me to opt for the public financial management module, given I have no background in accounts and finance? Certainly, they start from scratch. They start explaining what taxation and what tax is all about. And the entire module, it's from a governance perspective. It's not like an accounts or finance thing when you'll be taught how to calculate taxation. Why taxation is important, how different kinds of tax impact different uh, uh, stratas of society. So I, I, I recommend if you're interested in the module, go ahead. You don't really need a background in accounts or finance. Then uh, keeping in mind the changing current situation, our course is going to be held remotely for the next year in addition to being in presence. <laughs> oh, that, that's something we can't say. <laughs> I'll come back to that in a minute. Go try going on and I'll come back. Are alumni continuing their careers more in academics or on the field? It's both actually, it's a bit of both. So uh, sometimes uh, we do get chances to meet the alumni or speak to them virtually. And uh, some of them are working with the World Bank. Some of them are working with UN or even local charities, local institutions. So it really depends on your interest. I've, I've had a healthy for both of them. I've met both of them. Uh, is there an, okay, what are the, I think, I think Linda will have to answer these. Is there an on-campus version of sustainable development MSc? I don't think there is. Um, yeah. And I don't think there is. Um, there are lots of other degrees, but there's no equivalent, which brings together the, the closest is the MSc in climate change and sustainability, because that's the only other degree that brings together IDS, SPRU, which is the Center for Science and Technology Studies, and the University of Sussex in that combination. Then uh, there's this for the sustainable development MSc online course, are the fees different for international students? Mm. I don't think so, no. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. And then if you were to gain an offer, how long do you have from receiving an offer to accept the place? I, I think Linda sh should answer. Um, up until the up until we start, really, I think um, we will be writing to you and saying, uh, "Do you think you're going to come?" We obviously would like to know whether you're going to come or not. But um, really, up until up until up until we start, and that's a challenge for us and a problem for us in some ways, because we never quite know how many people are going to come to IDS, and it would be nice to have a firm idea. But yeah, um, it's very it's it's we don't insist we don't say you've got three weeks and make a decision and let us know um at all i put in the chat um three different links um for those of you who've been commenting on the q a i hope you can see the chat as well i put three different links to some of the term papers that students write um so that's not dissertations that's term papers and if we stay on i'll look at dissertations in a minute and give you some examples as well um, so our course is going to be held remotely next year in addition to being in presence. So, okay, Mariana, I'll put the, I'll put the chat in the Q&A as well. I'll put those links in the Q&A as well in a minute. 
Um, so I knew this question was going to come up and I, I really wish I had an absolute answer for you. I, I think it, it depends on so many things. It depends on the government policy or non-policy as often the case is. It depends on the University of Sussex decision because we work very hard to be aligned with and follow the University of Sussex, not least because the University of Sussex is our degree awarding body. Um, and it depends on the practicalities of being in the UK. And I really don't want to make any promises to anyone here that we can't keep. So I think it is most likely that it will be a combination, um, but I'm really sorry. I wish I could tell you definitively and clearly, but I, I, I really don't want to lie to you or promise anything that we can't deliver. So I think that is the most likely situation, but I'm not 100% sure. I think there is a very strong desire, both from the university and from staff, to move back to in-face, in-person teaching as much as possible once we restart. But I also think that COVID has fundamentally changed higher education. And so there's still, it's it's still not a hundred percent clear, and I'm I'm really sorry I can't tell you more on that. Uh, uh, yeah. Then there's which one is the MA most applied for in ideas? I think it's development studies. It's the MA development studies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, would you recommend having an idea for your dissertation topic ahead of beginning the course? That's such an interesting question. Um, some students come at the beginning of the year and they know exactly what they're going to write on and they write on it at the end of the year. Some students come knowing exactly what they're going to write on and write on something completely different at the end of the year. Some students, I, I had a chat with a student yesterday who said it was such a lovely expression. She said, I'm still dancing around my topic. Um, and, and some students take a, a, quite a while to settle in and decide what their topic is. So obviously by the time you have to write it, you have to have a topic but no you don't have to have one and in the same way it's equally fine if you do have one uh, what are the key differences between ma development studies and ma social development hmm tricky question because i don't work with the ma social development and it, it's a university of sussex degree um so i'm afraid i can't really tell you I can tell you that one of the big differences between IDS and the university is that the, uni the university is, the lecturers at the university are, are university lecturers, they do research, they teach, their primary occupation is, is, to, is to teach and they have undergraduates and postgraduates. At IDS, the fellow's primary occupation is to work in development um, and that's primarily doing research, being involved in consultancies, working with governments, trying to bring about social change, and we do some teaching. So what we don't have is people who, who teach on many, many different topics. What we have is often the topic the person is teaching you is the topic they work on. And, and the way we teach is different to the university, and this is, is an important difference. Um, the university, you will have one person who will take a whole module and do maybe every lecture with you. At IDS, often every lecture is a different person and you're getting the expertise of different people. So there's more space at IDS to shape your interests and build your connections and, and to make the module make sense to you from your perspective. Um, there's also a little bit more work to be done for you because you have to build the logic between each lecture. Um, so you get more variation, more diversity, more exposure, and there's a bit more work in terms of you have to think for yourself about how this lecture on maybe microcredit given by X compares to next week's lecture on participatory processes in, in finance, for example. Ayushi, do you want to add to that? Uh, no, I was just looking at another, I think, uh, another question. How are current students managing research without easy access to the library given COVID restrictions? Uh, okay, so uh, the library has not been closed for most of the part. They've just, uh, so you just have to choose your book on the online portal and then you can collect it. I had this personal experience when I was working on this uh, dissertation, uh, sorry, my term paper during the winter break where the library was closed for some time and I desperately needed this book, did not find a PDF. So I uh, wrote to one of the conven uh, one of my, uh, or one of the fellows of IDS who had been working and he had a copy and he ensured that I 
get it. So uh, I don't think resources would be a problem. The library is open. A lot of stuff is online. So it's not been a problem this year. It would certainly not be a problem next year. Then uh, are there opportunities for master's students to get involved with IDS other work? I, I think they post it on the website uh, whenever there's something available for the students. So. Yeah, I, I think that's a really interesting question and it's a good question. There are opportunities, but but they they're not they're not formalized. Then we don't have a process where we make sure every student gets an opportunity. It depends on the topic. It depends on the students past experiences. Um, there are many there are many different types of factors that come into that. So we don't guarantee anyone that they will be able to get involved in research at IDS, but there are opportunities and they come and go in quite a fluid way. Um, somebody's asked again about the difference between MA development studies and social, social development. And or, I think it's the same question. It's the same question, good. And somebody's asked if IDS has a different application process to the University of Sussex. And I think the answer is no, you apply through the University of Sussex, but you have to indicate on it that um, you are applying to IDS. You have to choose your degrees. Um, Mariana, I'm, I'd like to put the links to the IDS papers in the Q&A, but I need someone to answer a question so that I can do that. So if someone could ask me a question about where can I read some idea examples of idea actually I can go back to that question and put it there the question about ideas examples of dissertations yeah uh, I'd like to answer this question live I would not like to answer the question live I'd like to type an answer how do you prepare yourself before there's so much to learn that's such a good question um, I think there isn't that much to do, I don't think, to prepare yourself. You might be sent a few reading lists or some ideas, but we don't expect you to plan and prepare beforehand before coming to IDS. I think the most important thing to do maybe is to spend a bit of time on the IDS website, maybe listening to the podcasts or, or joining the odd seminar or lecture. Um, I think there's also a question about, I think that question is really good because this, you, how do you make the most of your time at IDS is also important. You've got to, when even when you come, you've got to be selective. So it's a good idea before you come to have an idea of the kinds of work that IDS does, the kinds of people, if there's one or two particular people you'd like to meet while you're there or particular work that you're interested in. It's a good, it's good to have a little bit of a sense of what IDS is and where your interests fit, if you can. But your interests might be that you're not sure where your interests are and you want to spend the time at IDS exploring it, which is also okay. Um, 